Hello, welcome to another edition of Cracking Cryptic. Um, I'm going to take a look at a killer Sudoku as well uh, today. So we're completing the set really. We did a times crossword earlier. We've done a super fiendish Sudoku, and now I'm going to have a look at this um, killer Sudoku. This was actually from yesterday's edition of the Times. The reason I've selected this one is it's meant to be harder. This is a deadly rated uh, killer Sudoku. I think uh, Thursday's edition was only tough. Um, so this is the hardest killer Sudoku you'll see in the British press um, and yeah let's have a look at it and see what we can see now what I'll try and do is to sort of coach through it so for example I can see immediately I can write in this square here um, and what I'd recommend you do is if you're sort of looking at the video thinking what on earth is he talking about then and pause give yourself time to think about um, how I might be able to write that in and then play the video once you've, you've given it a moment's um, pause because that way you probably get more out of it. Now why do I say we can write this number in? Well the absolute key to solving killer Sudokus is not actually to be very good at Sudoku. It's far more of a sort of geometric stroke mathematical problem um, than it is a Sudoku problem. Um, why do I say that? Well the constraint that every row and every column and every 3x3 three three box has to contain the numbers from 1 to 9 in a killer Sudoku context is great because that means that every row, column and 3x3 three three box needs to sum to 45 which is of course the sum of all the numbers from 1 to 9 so I'm looking here at column 9 of the grid which I know sums to 45 but if we look at the cages that we already have within um, column 9 you can see we have an 8 cage, we have a 25 cage that's 33 and we have a 17 cage that sticks out slightly. Well if I add the 17 to the 33 I get 50. So these three cages sum to 50 including this little box here but I know that if I deduct the total of column 9 from that I'll get 5 that must be the, co the contents of this cell in order to ensure that the whole column adds to 45. Um, so it's tricks like that that will get you through uh, killer Sudokus far more efficiently. Now what we could do now for example is to use the same trick we've used on column 9 and this 45 rule here. And we could think about this 3x3 three three box. Now we know this 3x3 three three box adds to 45 and it contains entirely within it a 5 box and a 17 box. So these two together obviously add, add up to 22. So these three cells therefore have to sum up to 23 in order to ensure that the box adds to 45. Now four, 23 and 3 cells can only be done one way. Um, and that's with 6, 8 and 9. So we can actually write that in that's quite interesting for a few reasons. Um, firstly, if we think about now where we need to place a 7 in this box, obviously it can't be in the 5 cells here, so it has to be on this side. Put the 7 in down here somewhere. The reason I think that's a little bit interesting is that I'm thinking about this 8 down here, where now 1 7 is ruled out for this 8, eight cage. That only leaves two, two possibilities, either 3 and 5, or 2 and 6, so we should bear that in mind for later. Um, but what else can we say? Well, we can actually use what we've just discussed there a little bit further, and it's quite elegant. We have a 5 cage here. Now, there are two ways of making 5 in two cells. You could have a 1 and a 4, or you could have a 2 or a 3. But whichever version you have, that will force the other version of the 5 into these three cells in some order. Now, why does that matter? Well, it matters very much because of this 8 cage. Let me show you. If this is 1, 4, 1, 4, then the 2 and the 3 have to go into these cells like this. And now let's ask ourselves how we would fill this 8 cage up. We can't. It can't be 1, 7, it can't be 2, 6, and it can't be 3, 5. So this combination here is absolutely impossible. 
and in fact it must be the other way around. This has to be 2, 3, this has to be 2, 3. One of the things that I think is also nice about this is this cell here allows us to say something about the value of these two cells. Now why do I say that? Well it's because this this 3x3 three three box needs to sum to 45. Now that means whatever we we place in this box if you like let's just do some maths to show you what I mean. If this is a 6 these two cells here would have to sum up to 16. Now 16 plus 10 is 26 therefore these five cells around the edge here would have to sum up to 19 and that means these two cells here would have to sum up to 17 so if this is if this is a 6 this would have to be an 8 9 combination like this and we could even go further here because again this is all really maths if you look at this cage which is a 3 by 3 cage um, let's look at this 8 and this 15, these sum to 23 that means these three cells have to sum up to 22 in order for this box to, to work and add to 45 that means that would then have to be a 5 and that would have to be a 7 so an awful lot of things propagate from the value we select in this box here now let's let's just see what happens if we flex this a little bit more so again let's do it slowly if this is an 8 these two cells have to sum to 14 that means with this 10 here that's 24 these five cells would have to sum to 21 these two cells would now have to sum to 15 and this would have to be a 7 these two sum to 15, well there are a couple of extra digits we need to put in there to allow for that possibility because they could be 6, 9, 6, 9 or 7, 8, 7, 8. And then finally let's imagine what happens if this is a 9. If this is a 9, 13 plus 10 is 23. These now have to be 22, these five cells around the edge here. And this would have to add up to 14, which would mean this was an 8. Um, but in that case, we have to remember actually that, um, maybe for the other case as well, because these three cells sum to 22, that's what we've been working on, it's impossible to make 22 without including a 9. So if this was an 8, this would have to, well, one of these cells would have to be a 9. And the other would have to be a 5. Now we haven't yet used this 11 box here. You can see this 11 box is seriously going to restrict the ability of this cell to take a high number. So let's just fill in all of them. For example, this, this clearly can't be a 9 here um, because if it is a 9, um, this cell is on. You can't, you can't fill these two boxes without them both being 1. Now if this isn't a 9, and yet we know these three cells sum to 22, this cell must be a 9. So let's fill that in. Remove the 9 from being a possibility here. And then we can see from this 5 here, this can't take a 5 either. So now let's last ask ourselves the question again. Is it still possible for these two cells to sum up to 14? Which was the logical consequence of this cell taking a 9? And the answer is no, uh, it's impossible because the only options for this cell are now 6, 7 and 8. So in fact this cannot be a 9. Uh, again this is really interesting because now we have a 22 cage here with a 6 or an 8 in this position so one of these has to be a 9 again. And in fact we can say a little bit more about this cell here. Um, because let's remind ourselves if this is a 6, these two sum to 16, this is a 10, so that's 26, these have to sum to 19 therefore, which would mean this would have to be a 6 in order to ensure these added to 15, 
Similarly, if this was an 8, um, by the same logic, uh, this would have to be an 8 as well. Um, now, so 7 is no longer possible in this cell, so we can remove it. Now, remember, these three together have to sum up to uh, 22. So this is either going to be a 5 or it's going to be a 7. This can no longer be an 8. Because if it was an 8, these three cells would sum to 23, which would break this box. So we can remove an 8 from this position. And that's nice because that 12 is now fixed. It, it is a 5-7 combination rather than uh, an 8-4 combination. And we can keep forcing the logic in these boxes now. This is 22. If this is a 6, this would have to be 7-9 into these two cells. If this is an 8, it, these two would have to be 5-9 without this being 5. So that would have to be a 5. So now we've very much limited the possibilities here um, for these two cells as well. One of the things I like doing in this sort of situation, you can keep forcing the right-hand side of the grid here. Look, we have, we've got 1s in these three cells. So we know none of these three cells can take a 1. We can't actually put a 1 in this 10 cage either, because if we did, the other digit in it would be a 9. And we know that there's a 9 in one of these two cells. So in fact, one of these two cells has to be a 1. Now, we know that this is a 6 or an 8, and therefore the other possibilities here are now becoming very limited. We could have a 2 as the other digit or a 4 is the other digit, but that's all. So this cage is now fast filling up. And I'd say there's one final piece of logic here that's necessary to, to crack this puzzle uh, reasonably efficiently. Um, and that we can see if we take a look at the bottom of the grid. So, so far I've not used any of this part of the grid at all, and I'm not actually going to. I'm just going to have a look down here. Well, we have a 23 box, and that's always quite useful because a 23 cage in three cells can only be 6, 8, 9. But we also have an unusual box that has a couple of properties that are important, and that's this 32 cage here in five cells. Now, normally, I wouldn't look twice at a 32 cage, but here, the fact that we have such a restriction over on this side of the grid means I think we need to pay some attention to it. And there are two things that we can ask ourselves that are reasonably simple. The first is, is it possible for a 32 cage in five cells not to contain a 9? Well, let's think about that. If we had an 8 and a 7 and a 6 and a 5 and a 4, um, would that be enough? Well, clearly not, because that, those numbers only add up to 30. So there's definitely going to be a 9 in this 32 cage. But the more sophisticated question is to ask, is it possible for there not to be an 8 in the 32 cage? So let's think about that. We, we know there's going to be a 9, so we can add 9, 7, 6, that's 22, plus 5 and 4. That will be 31 not enough. So in fact there's going to be an 8 in the 32 cage too. And that is really important because now we don't quite know how uh, where this 8 and 9 are going to lie along this 32 cage but we know that they will be there somewhere. Now we also know that there's definitely going to be a separate 8 and 9 in this 23 cage. So we now know that it's impossible for there to be an 8 or a 9 anywhere else in rows 8 and 9 of the grid. There couldn't, for example, be an 8 or a 9 here because that would break. There couldn't be an 8 or a 9 here because there's going to be an 8 and a 9. Um, there's going to be two 8s and 9s, if you like, in this cage and this cage. Not possible. So what does that mean? Well, it means that there needs to be an 8 and a 9 in these three cells, in this 3x3 three three box. Well, we've got the 9 already, but there's only one place the 8 can go, and that's here. So this has to be an 8. 
and from that I think we'll find that the puzzle will become relatively straightforward. Um, so what does that mean? Well that means that we know um, that there needs to be a 2 in column 9 but there's nowhere for it to go anymore. It has to go down here. And that allows us to say that these three cells here have to be 3, 5 and 8 in some order. And now these two have to be 4 and 6. This can't be a 5 anymore because there's already a 5 here. That means these two do sum to 16 and this is a 6. Now these two sum to 17, therefore this is a 2. And we can see we have 6s along here, so in fact the 6 down here has to go here. This has to be a 2. We know these three cells have to sum to 22, so this now has to be a 5, and this has to be a 7. And this 8 here forces this to be an 8, and this to be a 9, and this to be a 9, and this to be a 7. And you can see how it's all really starting to come together. And a quite interesting puzzle in the sense that we've focused exclusively, may well almost entirely on these three boxes with a little bit of help from these two boxes. We have not needed to look at these four boxes at all in order to essentially crack the puzzle. And I don't want the video to be too long today so I'm going to pause there. Um, I'll leave the rest of it as an exercise um, for the viewer. Um, if you do have any questions on how to make progress just, just uh, leave a comment on the video and we can uh, go through it at a different time. But I hope this has been relatively interesting. Um, just shows, um, I think, how important um, maths is for solving these puzzles and how important doggedness is for whole, uh, solving these puzzles. You have to make the numbers work for you. Um, and the more you do that, the easier these deadly killer sudokus become. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic.